Hello, I'm Betty, a mathematics educator from South Carolina. I'm here with Judy, a mathematics educator from Colorado. We're going to explore an activity called maximizing the area of a garden. This activity is located at Math Inspired at the education.ti.com website. If you'd like to access the TI Inspire activity or student activity sheets or teacher notes later for the activity. Again, at education.ti.com, activities, Math Inspired under the Algebra 2 section. The question related to this garden is posed on both sides of your screen. The garden has a rectangular shape, but only three sides will be fenced since it's attached to a barn, as shown in the images. We'll fence those three sides using 22 meters of fencing. As Judy will show you on the left-hand side, you can see how the width and length could be changed to form different gardens. And your challenge right now is to think of what type of garden you could sketch so that you could make five possible gardens recording the width, length, and area of each garden. So draw a line to represent the side of the barn, make a sketch of a garden, and record its width, length, and area, and repeat this. Once you've made a sketch of these five gardens and recorded the width, length, and area, please come back to the video. You may pause the video now. If you hadn't considered making a table to record your data, perhaps you could make a table like the one shown below or to the right and enter your width values in increasing order to perhaps better organize your data. So you'll enter the five width values and for each width, the length and area of that particular garden sketch. After you record, after you record your data, Consider the two questions below. What happens to the area of the garden as the value of the width increases? And if the goal is to maximize the area, which of your dimensions would you choose? Please pause the video and after you've recorded your data in a table and thought about these questions, please return to the video. Some sample data is shown on the next page. You may have used these length width values or others. You may have used width values that were not integers, perhaps 2.5 or 3.5. This is some sample data. What we'd like to ask you to do now is sketch a graph of your data with width as the independent variable and area as the dependent variable. If you'd like to include some of the values from this table, if you had not used those when you drew sketches, please include them as well. So sketch a graph of the data with width as the independent variable, area as the dependent variable, and then think about what type of function you could use to fit this data. What type of function would fit the data to express the area in terms of the width? Let's look at a graph of this data. On page 1.3 of the TI Inspire document, there's a place to enter the width and area data. Judy had already entered the data from the table. For example, when the width is 2 meters, the area is 36 meters, and the data are graphed. When we look at page 1.4 of the TI Inspire document, you'll see that the data is now graphed on a full screen on page 1.4. You did not have to re-graph if you use the TI Inspire document to graph the data. And again, thinking about what type of function could be used to express the area in terms of the width. Let's first of all determine this equation. We're going to ask you to write the equation for the perimeter of the figure. Think about having used two sides for the widths and the length, one length side, and a an length of 22 meters of fencing. So maximum of 22 meters for fencing 
to do the two widths and the length. Then you would solve for the length in terms of width and finally write an equation for the area of the figure, area in terms of width. Please pause the video, take a few minutes to write these equations and then return to the video. You hopefully started out writing the equation for the perimeter of the figure, but with only three sides being fenced, we have two widths plus the length is equal to 22, the 22 meters of fencing. So two times W plus L equals 22. If we solve for the length in terms of the width, we subtract 2W from each side. So this is 22 minus 2W equal to the length. Finally, write an equation for the area in terms of the width. Since the area of a rectangular shape is length times width, we have 22 minus 2w, all multiplied by w. So that's length times width. Now let's graph this function on the same page with the data. On the left-hand side, Judy's going to open up the function entry and since we're writing the function in terms of x, we'll replace width with x. And we have 22 minus 2x multiplied by x. You'll need to use the multiplication symbol there. And if you think about this, since 2x is multiplied by x, we have 2x squared. So it's 22 minus 2x squared, and this will be a quadratic function. This is a quadratic function. So the graph, a quadratic function is a parabola. In this case, the parabola opens down 22 minus 2x squared. The coefficient of x squared is negative. So using our function now, how could we determine the maximum area of the garden? Think about ways that you might have learned in the past to do this if you have the graph of a quadratic function to determine the maximum. And of course, we'd like to know what width value would produce the maximum area of the garden. Please pause the video and consider ways that you could determine the maximum area as well as the associated width value to produce this maximum area. Return to the video after you've had a chance to respond to these questions. Since the parabola opens down, you may have thought about of you may have thought of using the vertex to determine the maximum area. There are multiple ways you can determine the vertex, and you may have done that algebraically. On the TI Inspire, we could also trace by selecting trace from the graph menu. And when you trace on this particular function, it may show us the maximum when we move very close to that value are very close to that location on the graph. And notice here it says that it, the width value of 5.5 meters, our maximum area is 60.5 meters squared. We could have determined the vertex algebraically. Another way to think about determining the vertex when we have a graph is to look at the zeros of the function. When Judy Trace is very close to the zero, we find that the x value of zero results in zero. That's one of the zeros of this function. And as she traces over to the right, 11 comma zero is an x-intercept. 11 is the other zero of the function. So you may have learned in the past that the x value of the vertex is located at the average of these zeros. 11 plus zero is 11 divided by two so a width value of 5.5 is the x value of the vertex. So we could record that the width is equal to 5.5 meters. That would produce the maximum area. And a way to evaluate that, if you wish to use the technology in another way to evaluate it, even though we had already traced and seen that value, is that we could actually compute the function value. And we'll show you how to do that on a calculator page in just a moment. So we had our width of 5.5 and the maximum area you could obtain by substituting that width into the function. 
To do that using the technology, we'd add a calculator page, type F1, because the function was stored in F1, open parenthesis, and the X value of 5.5, press enter, and that evaluates the function value 60.5. And of course, you may have used other methods to determine the maximum area of the garden and the width that would produce the maximum area. Now we have a challenge for you. Suppose that this garden is not going to be attached to a barn, but it has a rectangular shape still. You have 22 meters of fencing to use for the garden, but in this case, of course, all four sides must be fenced. Your challenge is to determine the width and length that will result in a garden with the maximum area. Determine the width and length that will result in a garden with the maximum area. If you have downloaded the TI Inspire document, you can use the document to explore this challenge. For other videos, please go to the TI Education YouTube channel.